You don't sound good either. What's that? You I'm sick too. <laughs> He's sick yeah, too. Yeah, I'm not feeling well either. I was just saying to Jamie, I think everyone said. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community, particularly Jean M. Gyro, Beloved mother of my dear friend Denise Rogers, grandmother and aunt, Romaine Cadden Calra, devoted wife, mother of our friend Bob, grandmother, great grandmother and sister, Natalie Guidi Vitali, loving mother of former tax collector Marilyn Vitali Flynn, grandmother, great grandmother and aunt, Margaret Ann Devine, beloved mother of our friend Paul, grandmother, sister, and aunt, Irene Migliori, loving grandmother of Mark Migliori, manager and operator of ECTV, and their dear families and many friends who suffer their loss. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough. Mr. Rogan. Here. Mr. Loscom. Mr. Joyce. Here. Mrs. Evans. Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order, 3A, receipt of $1,000 check from Covenant Presbyterian Church, which represents <coughs> payment in lieu of taxes for 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, audit status report received from Robert Rossi and Company, dated November 29, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, applications along with decisions rendered by the Zoning Hearing Board on Wednesday, December 12, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Lackawanna County Planning Commission subdivision and land development evaluations received on October 31st and November 15th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meeting held on November 14th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3F, Minutes of the Scranton Firemen's Pension Commission meeting held on November 14th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3G, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held on November 14th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3H, Tax Assessor's Report for hearing date of November 14th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3I, Tax Assessor's Report for Results of Appeal Hearings held on December 5th, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3J, Tax Assessor's Report for Appeal Hearings to be held on January 9th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Councilman McGough is unable to attend tonight's meeting because he is hospitalized with pneumonia. Councilman Loscombe is also ill this evening with a stomach virus. 
Our thoughts and prayers are particularly with Bob McGough for a speedy recovery. Council Solicitor Hughes is also absent due to a health-related problem. Scranton City Council is most pleased to open its 2013 session. As we begin this new year, I'd like to remind audience members to turn off cell phones when entering council chambers and to remain quiet throughout city council meetings. Speakers are allotted five minutes in which to address council. At the sound of the bell, please be seated in order that all may have an equal opportunity to be heard. Finally, all questions and requests must be submitted in writing to council's office. Thereafter, council members and our staff will do our very best to obtain answers or provide solutions. That's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker this evening is Joe Burke. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Now, I uh, appeared before Council on October 4th, 2012. I spoke about the dangerous conditions that the truck traffic going to and from what was formerly known as the Naples Junkyard, junkyard presented to the residents of Lake Scranton Road as well as to all of the walkers and joggers who use the road. I supplied pictures, I supplied maps, I supplied photographs of the trucks, I supplied police reports of the incidents of the truck driver's trip for taking photos. I supplied emails. When I was done, poor Mr. McGough gave a very impassioned description of the conditions. And I quote from the minutes of that night. May I add to Mr. Burke's statements, a lot of people probably are not aware of the situation on Lake Scranton Road. Probably many people not even aware may be aware of where it is. But from personal experience, I do know that the residents of the area have been disturbed by the frequency of the traffic on the road, and hopefully we can do something about it. Second thing, Lake Scranton Road, all of the properties along there have no sidewalks. And yet it does get a lot of pedestrian traffic for people walking out to the bus stop or out to the lake. Personally, Mr. McGough said, we run that road on a frequent basis and it's dangerous with the amount of traffic, truck traffic that is on there to pedestrians as well. In addition, the last thing the road itself is very narrow and pretty much has been destroyed over the years by the traffic that is on it. You are right, referring to me. It's hazardous just driving a car along it at a time with the potholes and shoulders being destroyed. So hopefully we can take care of these problems and you know rectify the situation for you. Well, Council acted swiftly, introduced an ordinance for a vote on November 1st. At that time, Mr. McGough apparently lost his zeal to put an end to these dangerous and hazardous conditions. And he posed this question. As I was looking at the exemptions, would this prohibit development taking place in the section of East Mountain and actually up to Roaring Brook Township? And his quote, and the primary access for any of that construction type traffic is across Lake Scranton Road. Now, as I said before, Mr. McGough said, I realize it was excessive and all. I'm wondering if this legis legislation would prevent reasonable traffic from utilizing that access. Well, on October 4th, Mr. McGough indicated he was aware of the citizens of Scranton were at risk because of the terrible condition of Lake Scranton Road and the excessive traffic the huge triaxle and dump trucks going to DeNaples junkyard created. On that day, he described the traffic conditions on Lake Scranton Road as dangerous and hazardous not merely excessive. Mr. McGough's claim that Lake Scranton Road is the primary access for trucks going anywhere is absurd. On October 4th, he stated that he doubted if any residents of Scranton even knew where Lake Scranton Road was located. 
Lake Scranton Road may be the, the preferred route for the trucks going to the former junkyard, but that does not mean that the residents of Lake Scranton Road have to tolerate dangerous and hazardous conditions so the trucks can get in and out of the junkyard as quickly as possible. And I have to make one thing clear. Attorney Bilardi sent a legal consideration to Attorney Hill and based it on the Commerce Clause in the Constitution, saying that if Lake Scranton Road was closed, the Naples Auto Parts and the Recycling Center would not be able to operate. Mr. Burke, I don't mean to interrupt, yes. but if you could continue to speak into the microphone, I'm sorry. because I would, I would want to be certain that the people listening at home are able to hear you. Okay. Well, the facts of the matter is, and here is a map. May I approach? Yes, certainly. It's the same map I showed council, our picture council six months ago. Mr. DeNaples is making a landfill. These are the loads that the dump trucks have deposit. It's not going down to the junkyard to, to DJ pull it. It's not going to the recycling site. All of the photos that I've taken are dump trucks full of fill or dirt. So Mr. Galati's claim that we're interfering with DeNaples auto parts and the recycling center doesn't hold water because the trucks that we are concerned about are dump trucks that are creating a landfill where the Denaples junkyard used to be. It's really that simple. There's no car carriers coming across Lake Spring and Road. They are dump trucks. I have pictures galore of nothing but dump trucks. Yes, please finish up. Okay. The two block length of Lake Scranton Road, that's all there is, 20 homes, where I have resided since 2007, never was or will be the primary access for construction traffic headed toward Roaring Brook Township. Six miles up the road is Blue Shutters Road. It's a state-owned, state-maintained road. It goes all the way from Muzik Street to Moscow. You can pick up 84, 380, 81, and you can also intersect with Elmhurst Boulevard, which will take you exactly where Mr. DeNaples wants his trucks to go. They don't have to go across Lake Scranton Road. There never was any excessive truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road until 2009 when the access road was created. Part of Attorney Bellardi's claim is that Mr. DeNaples operated for 50 years. Well, he probably did, but he never operated through Lake Scranton Road until 2010. He claims that if Lake Scranton Road is restricted from truck traffic, that the junkyard would be landlocked. I was at the Bunker Street Bridge yesterday and saw a red tri-axle dump truck. I had to stop my car so it could come across the bridge. The bridge has a 13-ton capacity. It still operates. There's no restrictions on that bridge. Everyone uses it. There's no reason why they can't use it. On November 8th, the council legally and lawfully adopted an ordinance restricting the truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road. But Mr. McGough sought an amendment and it went back to Attorney Kelly's office for review. I tried to call Attorney Kelly every day for 12 consecutive days and he never returned my phone call. I explained to his receptionist, Sally and Kara, that I had all this information that he might want to review before he made his decision. He never called me. He never reviewed it. On Saturday, November 22nd, ironically, right after D's You Pull It came to my house with a turkey from Mr. DeNaples. He felt bad because his truck driver had threatened me in September. Now, I realize that every man has his price but a turkey is a little low. Later that day, I got this from Attorney Kelly saying regarding the closure of truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road, the city received a letter from Attorney Jeffrey Bellardi objecting to the ordinance saying one, no truck study was completed, and two, the closure will, will result in illegal restraint of trade. Once again, it's dirt. There is a landfill in the Naples junkyard. They're not car carriers. They're not recyclable trucks. 
They're dump trucks. I have dozens of pictures, and I showed you the site. If no one's interested in the city of Scranton, talking about the administration, to stop this or to at least investigate it without the summary review that Attorney Kelly said he did, then I don't know what to do. <coughs> Mr. Burke, I'm actually going to uh, address this under motions this evening. I believe there are several options available and uh, certainly as a council, it is our duty and responsibility to safeguard the uh, safety, welfare, and quality of life on a daily basis of Scranton residents. Well, and I appreciate that. But I think the most salient point here is nobody wants to admit that there's a landfill being created in the area that was formerly known as the Naples Junkyard. And why no one wants to admit that is awfully suspicious. I'm not saying counsel, I'm saying Attorney Velarde didn't mention these dump trucks. All he mentioned were recyclable trucks and trucks going to the Naples uh, auto parts. So that's about it. That's all the information that I have that's new. It's disappointing. But I, um, I fail to see how Solicitor Kelly could say that the city is not interested in pursuing this because they would be at liability. The city has nothing left to lose. If the city really wanted to protect its citizens, liability wouldn't be an issue. It would be their priority. And I never heard of anyone saying the Commerce, the commerce Clause supersedes public safety. But that's all. I've run over my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Faye Frannis. Hi, Jim. Okay. Faye Frannis, Scranton. I, I'm glad Mr. Burke spoke because I'd like to address the same issue. Mrs. Evans and Mrs. Craig. As you well know, in 1995, 17 years ago, I had an ordinance passed at City Council to stop truck traffic in Bellevue. To this day, 17 years later, not one truck has been stopped. I live on Railroad Avenue, and there must be at least 15 trucks a day to go down my street. The whole area I live in, I mean, it's not East Mountain, but it's a much more drastic situation because I live in a cave area. And every time a truck goes by, my house shakes. My garage caved in. The mining had to come and fill it in concrete. The house behind me, completely demolished, gone. It just caved right in. It's, now it's just an empty lot. The house down the street from me, the whole kitchen caved in. I mean, it's just, I could go on and on. So when I go down the baseball field every day with my boy, I see policemen in the parking lot sometimes. And I stop and I say, oh, you're here to stop the trucks? They said, what trucks? There's like 15 signs from every section coming down Luzerne Street, coming up South Washington, coming up Elm Street, 7th Street, every angle to get to Bellevue saying no trucks over 10 ton. They just whiz right by. The policeman didn't even have a clue what I was talking about. Now I spoke with Chief Murphy when he was the chief along with Captain Graziano. We had a long discussion about this and they said they would look into this and do something. Well, to this day, nothing has been done. And there's like a $300 fine for trucks. Do you know the money that you could have made, the city could have made if they enforced this? Not just warnings, they should ticket these men. I mean, Eddie Chumko and myself, we have tons of pictures. We brought them to council many times. I've addressed this many times at council. And they, then one policeman said to me, well, we have to have the truck weighing devices. Well, maybe so, but then you know what? If Clark Summit, a little borough like Clark Summit, I just read in the paper two weeks ago, where Patty Lawler and, and Jerry Carey got this grant or something for, for weighing machines for the police to stop their truck. State Street is terrible in Clark Summit, and I'm glad they're doing something, because that's a nightmare up there, trying to get across that street. But as bad as that is, we live in a cave area, and truck after truck after truck goes by. So this is the law that's already in effect, and nothing is being done, nothing has been done, I don't know where to go next. I'm going to ask to speak with uh, Chief Graziano again. 
Well, actually, um, this was brought to his attention, and he did respond to City Council. Unfortunately, I don't have that letter with me this evening, but he is suggesting changes to the ordinance that would make it enforceable for the Scranton Police Department. And with his assistance, that's what we intend to do. Mrs. Evans, do you mean without the machines? Without having the machines, are you saying they would, how, could, how are they going to enforce it if they don't have the weight thing? Uh, actually. That's the excuse they're giving me. Mm -hmm. And the police chief is well aware of that. And so uh, we'll follow up on it, but I believe he was suggesting that perhaps that would be the section that would be amended. Th that they're going to put an amendment in there saying that it's enforceable? That's not already in there? I mean, it's not enforceable? No, no, no. It is a city ordinance is enforceable, but there has been the issue involving the weights. And the police chief feels that by amending the original ordinance, whenever it was passed in 1995, 1995 can rectify the situation and provide language whereby the police department is going to be able to enforce the ordinance. Well, thank you very much, because we're living in fear I mean, seriously, because our house is shaking. And Eddie Chunko is beside himself, and he has a nice business up there on Redwood Avenue. But every person in Bellevue deserves protection. Another issue, I'd like to thank uh, Dave Gervasi very much for coming in front of council and letting the citizens of Scranton aware of the fact that the Scranton Police Department is coming to people's homes and putting in fire detectors. They're life-saving measures. And, and I was one of the people that called and I they came to my house and they were the nicest kindest men there was nothing they wouldn't answer they they took all the time in the world to explain everything they tested everything once they put it in they went over everything with me asked if I had any more questions and specified if I had any questions at all to call any time and they'd be more than glad to answer anything it was uh I'd like to give them recognition because they were the best lieutenant Jim Walsh from engine 7 A.J. Samuels was a driver. Private Tim Koch, Koch I believe it was, uh, he was there also, and uh, Private uh, Art Franklin, he was on board. They were, they were wonderful, and we talk about life-saving for the people. I mean, this is an opportunity I hope everybody takes advantage of, and thanks to Dave Gervasi, now we all know about it, and these wonderful guys, and they were explaining to me that these, these specific four men, they were like in the west side area, I guess, and I guess in south side, a different group of men would come. You, you can't go wrong. It's the best thing that ever happened. And I want to thank them very, very much and the Scranton Fire Department. We're certainly getting something out of our tax dollars with the Scranton Police and with the Scranton Firemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. So uh, I knew you started at six, but my 92-year-old aunt phoned me. It, I just couldn't leave immediately. I, I, she phoned one time, and I was watching wrestling, and I hung up on her, and I'd never live that down. I'd, I'd like to thank Mr. Bolas for, uh, on behalf of several people that I delivered dinners to. The city is is blessed to me to have a benefactor like that that cares so much about the people. There was a very successful event. You know, what, what has Chris Doherty done in 10 years? To, to, something positive like that. He hasn't done a thing for the city in 10 years. You'd need a row of toilet paper to write all the adversities down. He hasn't done one thing positive like this for the people of this city. That's a shame. And, and I read Charlie Newcomb's letter in the, in the paper. 
and he seemed upset about anybody against the wage tax. Charlie Newcomb doesn't go anywhere and talk to people like I do. The, there would have been an organized boycott of this, of this city just before Christmas. At, forget 22,000 or 10,000 or 5,000. If just a few hundred people boycotted the, the downtown and the stores in this city, it would have hurt. That, that's why I was against it. And I think Mr. Sheridan made his point very well last month about the, the parking. It's, it's going to be a big expense if, if, if it happened with insurance and so on. The, the money that you'd, you'd be taking in there you'd be losing tax-wise at the other end because there'd be less of it. So I, I don't see where, to me, that's all that's just counterproductive. You know, we've, we've had 20 years of Pell, and all they come up with, 20 years borrow and raise taxes. It, I think Tuesday the paper said foreclosures were up 91 percent. Is that right? Something like that, Tuesday's paper. And here, here we are raising taxes again. Because, you know, it, 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 Pell, we just don't need Pell. Uh, last month, the hospital bought a house on the 700 block, Monroe. $36,000. You know how to save $36,000 real fast? Get rid of Gina McAndrews. She got a $36,000 salary. What does she do for the city? Just tell me one thing why we need her as a coordinator to Pell to tell us to raise taxes. There's, I, I, I heard more intelligent conversation at that meeting, at, at that Christmas dinner, than I've heard c coming, coming from Pell year after year after year what's in the paper. I, I, I don't know. You, 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 you people have to learn that Scranton is an individual city. It's not like the other cities. It's like a fingerprint. We, we are all alone, and they, you can't just open a book and say, this is what you need to do. You need some, some, some intelligent people to tell Scranton what to do, and Pell doesn't seem to have a, a, a single one. 20 years, there's nothing intelligent comes out of Pell. Uh, uh, Christmas Eve, I was at a party. Someone came up and said I offended them, saying that the University of Scranton was one of the worst things that ever happened to the city. Well, I say that tenfold times. 20-fold times. Our, our school system would be better off, we'd have streets and, and everything else if it weren't for the university. You'd Thank be able you. to make a budget if it weren't for the two colleges. Let me ask you one thing in going. What will you people do when you lose Steamtown to the colleges? And it's coming just as sure as the nose is on the end of your pretty little face you're going to lose Steamtown and all those businesses in the near future, believe me. There's, you've Thank you. got to put an end to them taking over the city like they have. Thank you, Mr. Elman. Well, thank you for allowing me up here. Certainly. Thank you. Thank Andy you. Spiraglia.
Andy Sprague, Sons Grant, and Fellows Grantonians. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I went over your budget. And really, there's more holes in that budget than there is in Swiss cheese. Everywhere in there, your numbers don't add up. This budget is more of a dream than actually a reality. I don't know if we're actually going to be under the 12, the 22, or the 29 percent tax increase. And I don't even know what the tax increase is going to be on the millage of the land, I mean the improvements. But that's beside the point. The point is a lot of stuff in that budget isn't there and probably never will be there. Your commuter tax went down the drain, okay? We accept that. But for the reasons and what came out of that, I mean, whoever prepared all them facts and figures and went before the judges didn't really do a good job. Whether you did it, I don't blame you, Mr. Joyce. You're not a, somebody that sit there, but the business administrator should have done a better job. That's his job to do it. You were only an auxiliary. And everything you did was based on him. So that didn't go through. The nonprofits are laughing at us and will continue to laugh at us. There's another hole in the budget. The advertisement, I know it's out for bid, you're going to rebid it. Let's hope something happens, but I don't know. Your amusement tax, Snow Mountain's up there under receivership right now on, on the auction block. Whether you're going to get much money from the ski in there or not, I don't know, because they are bankrupt. And people are going for tax reductions all the time. And nobody from this city goes down there and uh, goes down there and monitors who's getting reduction on their taxes. Your budget is not going to work out. Next year I can see you coming for, for a non-funded debt before the judges again. Because even, even your landfill, you can't really put the landfill out in the hole and say, we ain't going to pay you for a couple years. We're good old boys, you can trust us. That's not going to work. You've got to pay your bills no matter what they are. Either go bankrupt or pay your bills. You cannot borrow us into oblivion at 9.8% paper clean. One of them was 50%. In other words, for every dollar we're paying back 50 cents. That's only because they were short loans. Longer loans, it probably would have been double. You've got to come to reality what's happening. I don't care if you never run for another office. At least what point you won't be putting our grandchildren into bondage and our children because they got to pay this debts. And at this interest rate, it's, there's no way. This, I looked at the school budgets. I think they wanted 109, city, city 105, and plus the county. You're close to a quarter of a billion dollars you want to draw out of the pockets of Scranton. How deep do you think our pockets are? You got to come up with a reality. Some way you got to get to nonprofit. Some way, even if you go to Harrisburg and ask them to pass a law that they must pay for fire and police protection, even though if they get away with the land, that you can do. They shouldn't be for all taxes. That's ridiculous. But fire protection and police protection. They should be made to pay. And you've got to do something like that. Because these figures are so obnoxious. Anybody that can add one and one and get two is frightened of what's going to happen. People come up to me and I'll ask about the 22%. I said, I don't really know. It's probably, if they really wanted to pay off the debt, put the city where it should be. We should be about 29 this year. God knows what next year is. Because other than that, we're going to run into unfunded debt again. You're going to be back at the courts, and they're going to laugh at us. They already did laugh at us, but this time they're going to really laugh at us. Saying you can't add, you people up there can't add one and one and get two. I'm sorry, I don't want to pay higher taxes. But unless you come up with some way to get the nonprofits to kick in for at least the fire and police protection, we're on the way to nowhere. The city will de constantly decline. 
And I don't blame people for not wanting to be here. I mean, I saw you, some people sometimes throw up Wilkes-Barre going up to, what was it, 33% or something like that. Hazleton, 85. But they don't pay our wage tax. That's what you got to remember. Thank you. Thank you. And Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good, Good evening. evening. Um, I'd just like to let the Council know that I made another right to know request under Section 312 and 313 of the Home Rule Charter. Um, I had ironed out with the staff in the Office of Council the last time the information I requested, but for some reason Council refused to comply and give me that information. So I did another right to know. And uh, I just hope that this time council will com comply with my request for a right to know. Um, at a prior meeting, I came in and brought the law books for the right to know. And that request could be made verbally. I also made that request verbally at that time. I think the sad part that I think all the residents should know is that this is an election year. And we need to know what investigations council's done what frequent audits or special audits council's done. There's a reason we got laughed out of court. And what I take out of that is that the court knows that there's just so much incompetence in city government that there was no way to move forward. When you sat there and you listened to the testimony, and you know, Council President Evans, you talked about a responsibility for safety, welfare, and the quality of life of Scrantonians. I think people need to, I, I don't think most people need to walk around and recognize that the vast majority of rental properties are empty here. And I just think that one of the great things that could happen here is I think the FBI should come here and investigate what's happened with all the community development money and why we're tearing all these properties down in the neighborhood and why we're decimating our own tax base. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then, well, to vote against SAP and the creation of jobs and a any comprehensive plan at all that will help to lift the residents out of the poverty they're experiencing, I find troubling, extremely troubling. This was a supermajority that came in and said it was going to be transparent and was going to make changes and do things differently. But you know, when you've got Judge Nealon wondering why the whole city tax base goes to pay wages, and then you realize that what's come out in court is that we haven't closed any of our shortfall in the budget. Not one drop with the borrowing we've done. That money has gone other places. You know, they talked in the court about the, uh, the settlement with fire and police and how the interest on that was only 6%, but the city was probably going to borrow money to pay it off at over 10%. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense, you know. They talked about the mall possibly and what would happen to that property. Well, I'm going to tell you that there's a high probability that that mall is going to close because our population base keeps declining. You go back a couple of years and you remember the shops that were there. You take a look at what's there now. You realize that we can't make our pension obligations. We're borrowing money for everything. We're so far behind on that, it's ridiculous, okay? I mean, all of our tax revenue going to pay wages and we keep talking about the nonprofits. Well, look at council had an obligation under the Home Rule Charter, and then we keep blaming the mayor. When councils for 30 years could have overrode every mayor's budget and created a budget that was based in fact and reality and started to turn this city around, and it didn't happen. And all we kept getting is the blame game of who did what and elect me and I'll make it different. And now we've come to the point where the PALs acknowledge that they're not here to salvage the city. They would have to make sure the bondholders get paid. So we're borrowing money at astronomical amounts of interest and continuing to sink the city further in debt without any idea how we're going to salvage what's left of this city. And we're going to keep tearing structures down throughout all the neighborhoods and using community development money to do that. 
and keep, and now we're to the point where, you know, we're not even going to pay the landfill. And now we're going to talk about Scranton being a progressive city. And you've got seniors who cannot pay anymore. And it doesn't even only have to do with seniors. It has to do with young families, all families. Go through the neighborhoods and see all the rental properties that are empty. People who have the ability to move are leaving. We're losing all of their wage tax. We're just, we're, we're, we're creating a problem where we're causing more deterioration in the neighborhood as we listen to half-truths, propaganda, and outright lies by the people we elect to represent us, all right, and to be concerned about our safety, our welfare, and our quality of life. Is this the quality of life we want for Scrantonians locked to our debt for 30 years? Ask yourself that question. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. I'd just like to begin by wishing everyone a happy new year. And obviously, with that in mind, um, we hope to have a uh, productive new year uh, in terms of our financial uh, situation. Uh, certainly the past year, we, we obviously, as we know, faced some uh, tremendous financial challenges uh, throughout the summer. Uh, we faced a difficult task to uh, come together, uh, elected officials, the council and the administration, uh, to revise a recovery plan and to craft uh, an operating budget uh, for 2013. Certainly a difficult task and a daunting task. Um, you know, listening to some comments tonight regarding the future of the city and things that have gone on in the past, you know, certainly I'm just as frustrated as anyone in terms of the situation we're in and knowing full well that we've had to deal with fiscal mismanagement by this administration for the last 10, 11, 12 years. But I know being realistic, as we all like to be realistic, that we can't go back and point the finger and say this person did that, this person did that, did that. We know what happened. We know we had rubber stamp councils that ran the administration's agenda through. But going back and addressing that and being repetitive with that isn't going to change the situation we're in. As I said, I'm just as disgusted as anyone else about it. But going back and harping on it isn't going to get us out of debt. We need to continue moving forward, working together to move this city forward. And that's the only way we're going to solve our financial problems is by continuing to move forward and working together. You know, a lot of people didn't think that council and the administration could come together. But because this council has a commitment to moving forward and bettering the taxpayers of this city, you knew that we had to put personalities aside and politics aside for the betterment of the city, and you realized that we had to work together. And you were able, we were able to see things happen in these chambers that in the past we never saw, and that is having a business administrator come forward and a mayor come forward to council and the public and address the issues facing the city. We never saw that in the past. But because this council is committed to openness and transparency, something that you know, you're uh, ridiculously criticized of doing the complete opposite of, um, you should be commended for it. Because we haven't seen the transparency, the accountability, and the openness in this chamber in, in decades. And it's occurring right now. You know, some of the events that transpired uh, over the last few weeks, uh, certainly the decision by the judges to deny the commuter tax uh, was a difficult decision for the city. Uh, we know that that revenue that was put in the recovery plan was an integral part um, of the city's uh, financial situation. It was an integral part of our budget that we were hoping to realize that revenue over the, the next three years. And obviously with the judge's decision, um, at this time we now face the task of, of having to come up with another solution to realize that potential $4 million in revenue uh, that we, need to, we have an obligation to realize. Um, we were also made aware that um, no entity at this point in time has put a bid in uh, for the uh, market-based revenue opportunity. That's $300,000 or in that area, a little more, that we now have an obligation to put that out for bid a second time and hopefully someone will come forward. And if not, we then have to uh, uh, obviously look into uh, dealing with some sort of marketing group so that we can realize that revenue. But the people at home viewing tonight and all the taxpayers across the city need to realize one thing. This was not an easy task. And you know, the last year, throughout this whole process, as I sat back and, and, and listened to speaker after speaker and, and talked to people on the street, um, I don't think people realize how difficult of a task it is 
to sit in your place. Um, certainly from my experience of coming here, I know it's not easy. And I wish it was as easy as a lot of people think it is. Um, I truly don't believe a lot of people could last five minutes in your shoes if they realize what you went through each and every day. This isn't about coming down here 6.30 every Thursday night and playing in front of a TV camera. This is a 24-7 operation where you're consistently on phones, dealing with emails, de dealing with issues. It's not easy. So when we come forward and we make statements, I think we need to realize that this is a difficult job and that this council came in to a situation caused by the previous council where you had to come in and clean up the mess. It was a nightmare, and it's still a nightmare. We know we have a long way to go, and this past summer, as we all know, we faced payless paydays, and I mean, the city was on the verge of bankruptcy, and we didn't want to see that take place. Difficult decisions had to be made, and I know at times we were ready to throw in the towel, but I know this council has a philosophy of not giving up, and that's the attitude that we need here. We need to continue to come forward. We need to continue to offer positive solutions. The neg negativity we need to leave at the door. This needs to be a new vision, a new direction, so that we could see a day where we turn this city around and the future is bright. All this debt that's left affects my generation. All the young people of this city, Councilman Joyce, Councilman Rogan, it's our generation. It's our time to come forward and offer the solutions because the decisions that were made in the past certainly have caused a lot of problems. But it's just my hope that moving forward, as we look into a new year, we stop the finger pointing. This isn't about personalities. This isn't about egos. It's about finding solutions. And I'm confident that there will be a day where we turn this thing around. But it's going to take teamwork and a cooperative effort. And I have, as I said, I'm confident that we will turn this thing around. And I thank, thank you for your you. time. Thank you. Evening, Council. Bob Bola, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. First off, I'd like to wish everybody here a happy new year. Hopefully this year is going to be a lot better than last year was. Uh, it's been a rough year in a lot of respects. We were successful with our dinner this year, and I need to thank the people that showed up, the volunteers that came there, and the media that got our message out. It's through all the cooperation of all these people that made this a successful dinner again. And I'd like to kind of paraphrase that into tonight. What makes something successful is everyone working together. And if we all work together, we can come to a solution. We can come to a reasonable outcome if everybody is interested in doing that. It's not about politics anymore. We've seen that with the fiscal cliff and all the other nonsense. We all knew they were going to sign a paper. You know, it's a joke. They didn't even read it, and they signed it. And that's why we're where we are today. Not only in the government, but in our own city. I sat through the hearings and uh, kind of was dismayed that this city didn't even know what its debt was. I was asking for a commuter tax to pay a debt because they had no money. Yet when it all came out, they were getting more money than they were entitled to. They don't know the purpose of debit and credit. Basic accounting. One and one is two. And that's why we're where we are. What we need to do now in this year, that'd be a year of revival. Got to put fees on nonprofits. You can't look around the corner anymore and play politics with the powerful. You gotta stand your ground and make it happen. You gotta cut the debt by instituting out of the box creativity. You gotta become creative, you can't be stagnant. We can't just sit back and not let nothing happen and say, well, well, it'll take care of itself. You know, we have to find out what our real debt is. Nobody knows. That was just proven. You got to put the pride back into our police, fire, DPW, back into the people in the city of Scranton that have made to look like fools throughout the country. Pay a minimum wage. It's not what we're about. 
not what we used to be about, but this is just way out of control. To turn around and sit and point fingers, let me say this, and I don't want to take them the wrong way, but when you run for an elected office, you run for a purpose. The purpose should be to represent the people, no matter good, bad, or indifferent. And we learned from the past. The past isn't gone from our learning process. We learn from history. Unfortunately, the city of Scranton has not learned from history. When we have the debt that we're facing, I mean, where does the money come from to pay just the interest on the loans? Not counting what we're gonna have to figure out how to pay the principal. As I've always said, you cannot borrow to get out of debt. You can keep taxing, taxing. But one day, the people are going to revolt. They're not going to pay the tax anymore. Then where is the city going? The fiscal mismanagement of this city over the last 8, 12 years has been ridiculous. No business could survive the way the city has been run. Professional fees, give them what they want rather than put them out for bid. Where you need to take this is to rein that in. Yeah, it's an administration's issue. The administration has control over the millions of dollars to the good old boy club. And what do we get for it? Absolutely nothing. The question I do have is, I understand, and I don't know how true it is, that the police department received a couple checks for something, whether it was a settlement of some sort in the last few weeks. Is there any truth to that? I mean, I didn't read anything in the papers or the press or anything like that, but if anything of that nature had uh, happened, if they've received money for something. I have no knowledge of that. Okay. Would council check into it to see if the police department has in fact received any type of uh, compensation, whether it's for litigation or anything, that was out there. Yes, if you put the request Pardon? in, if you put your request in writing to our office, we'll look into oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I uh, definitely want to do that. Uh, one question. The mayor had made a statement that he intends to sell another city asset. Is council going to let him give away more of our assets this year than he did over the last few years? like the ice box, like when you tried to give away part of NAOG to Lackawanna College, give away because we're not getting paid for it, gave away to Southside Center. Is council gonna sit back or does council have any knowledge of what asset the mayor intends to try and liquidate now? To balance his playgrounds or whatever it is, his little ballpark or his own little uh, empire here at the expense of all of us. Would you like that in writing, Mrs. Evans? You can put that in writing, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Wes Spiller, City Resident, Homeowner, Taxpayer. Uh, I too would like to wish everybody a happy, healthy New Year. As Mr. Bola said, I hope it's better than last year was for everybody. Uh, I think it's too bad the commuter tax was shot down, but uh, as Bob said, I heard the mayor say we either have to borrow or uh, sell an asset. First of all, borrowing is why we're in this situation we're in now. We can't borrow any more money. I don't know what the answer is, and I'm not an advocate of bankruptcy, but maybe that's the answer. I, I don't know any way, other way out, but we cannot borrow any more money. I, I don't know how we're going to pay it back. And as far as an asset, what do we have left to, to sell? Nayog Park? What else is he going to sell? Maybe we'll sell City Hall with the stipulation of Mayor Doherty goes with it and we'll have him out of our hair. Uh, I, I don't know what, what the situation, what the solution is, but a, maybe it is bankruptcy. Uh, one thing, uh, when uh, Mayor Connors tried to implement the uh, commuter tax. He was denied by the local judges, but he appealed it and he won in a higher court. Is the city considering possibly doing that? 
I'm sure it's under consideration, but I haven't received a definite answer. Okay. Uh, now, the, the 2011 audit, Councilman Joyce, was that finished yet, do you know? We received uh, back from Rossi and Rossi a draft, and the sit, it's now up to the city to uh, prepare a management uh, discussion and analysis section. That's customary that they do that every year. And then they send that back to Rossi and Rossi. And then once Rossi and Rossi gets that, they issue the final audit and there's an exit conference held. So right now the city has to prepare that section. Okay, but this was due in May, am I correct? Correct. Why did this take so long? To me, to me this is just total incompetence. And I think the city should look for a different firm to uh, do this, this audit. This, this is every year anymore. So here we're in January of 2013, and this was due seven months ago. Well, it's still not official. This is just incompetence. Mr. In Spindler, opinion. it really isn't a matter of incompetence on the part of the auditors. Um, I think if we take a, a trip through time prior to the Doherty administration, <clears throat> you'll find that audits were generally produced in a timely manner. And it wasn't until 2002 and beyond that a pattern of, of uh, never-ending lateness was developed. And uh, I think in large part, it, this actually was something I was going to address under motions. In large part, it was due to the fact that the Department of Business Administration had been downsized so severely from 2002 forward, so that uh, there aren't the people working there who once did, who knew their responsibilities and were able to produce an audit in a timely fashion. Okay, thank you. Uh, someone brought it to my attention that when Engine 15 on Ash Street was closed, that was a fairly new fire truck, I was told, and they say that's a troop now. And someone yeah. told me they saw it at a troop fire on the news. And uh, Engine 7, which is on Luzerne Street, is driving a much older vehicle. Hmm. Can the uh, council look into that and see if that's true? Yes, yeah, so if you would put that in writing oh. to our okay. office and we'll okay. follow up on that. For and, uh, you. But I would think uh, the reason the engine would have been in troop would probably have been that the Scranton Fire Department was assisting the Troop Fire Department at that's, the time. That's possible. I was told it was given to Troop. I, I found that hard to believe. Tend, I was, I was yeah. told by a good source. I wouldn't tend to believe that. I actually heard the same thing that Mr. Spindler did, and I know a letter was sent months ago that, once again, we didn't receive a reply from the administration asking if any um, fire trucks or engines were being loaned out to other municipalities. And I use the term loaned out because, as Mrs. Evans said, if there's a fire in a neighboring community, obviously we want to help them out. But if they're having our equipment on a long-term basis for free, that's certainly not something that I, that that I would support. Right. Yeah. I could see renting it to them, maybe, not just giving it to them. Uh, lastly, a few weeks ago, Senator John Blake, I forget if it was in the paper or on the news, said that uh, any city that's under Act 47 didn't come out of distress status. It was only boroughs. So, uh, and he said he thinks this city should revisit Act 47 because it just doesn't seem to be helping us. And uh, I know he's trying to do something else to, to help the city along. I forget exactly what his idea was. But uh, his statement was that there wasn't a city that was under Act 47 that came out of distress status. Well, I think we're just wasting our time with that. We're wasting our time with PEL. I think the city should see what it do to get, if they can get rid of PEL, even if we have to get sanctioned. They've done nothing in 20 years. Everybody knows that the, we're worse off than we were 20 years ago. I mean, we've never been, this city has never been this bad. Never. I mean, pe people criticize Mayor Connors. I think he did a great job. We didn't have these troubles under Mayor Connors. And it all started in 2002 when Chris Doherty took office, again with the borrowing and spending. And again, I, I, I implore 
council not to borrow any more money. Right? We just cannot do it. Uh, one last question. Are the meetings now starting at 6 o'clock? Pardon me? Are the meetings starting at 6 o'clock Yes, now? they are. Because I was unaware of that. I well, got here 20 was, after to my I'm surprise. I'm sorry. It was advertised. Okay. I, I normally don't look at the advertising. I, for years, it was 6.30. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. My name is Edwin Tobin. You all know me from our great experience with the door down here. Yes. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to do the same thing with your crosswalks. Before I go any further, I want to ask one, you one question, Mrs. Evans. Who paid for the DPW men to spend this last Sunday down on Lackawanna Avenue cleaning the snow away so we could have a New Year's Eve party? Well, I'm sure that will cost us uh, through our budget, which means the taxpayers of Scranton. Now, we can spend tax money to have a party, but we can't pay tax money to clean crosswalks? <coughs> right out here in front of City Hall, I want you to all go take a look when you go home. This side, beautiful. No problem. The other side, snow up like this on Mulberry and, and North Washington. A little bit of path. Can't fit a wheelchair through there. But yet, come on downtown. Shop downtown. <coughs> How the hell do we do it? Excuse my French. This was turned in right after the first snowstorm. Took it down to the mayor's office. The lady that, not the regular girl, the, his secretary, she was on vacation or something was another lady. She says, I agree with you. I will call them right now and tell them. She called DPW. She can't remember who she got. Oh, we were out and got them all cleaned already. I come back. Hmm. Hmm. I guess I'm seeing things. Wasn't cleaned. I went down in a couple days later, got the young lady that is the secretary. We'll get at it. I went in today at 10 o'clock and complained about it. She called, she said she called, and they said, yes, we made a little path, but we'll get somebody right down to take care of it. It's still the same way. You know what? If this was the United if this was the federal government and the president was pulling something like this, he'd be brought up on charges for not doing his duty. Federal law says they're to be accessible at 
all times. You wonder why I'm getting so mad and agitated? I like to be able to go around and move. I don't want to sit in my apartment all winter long. Your garage, you know, your garage on Linden Street there. It's just now that you can get through that little, what is it, Forest Street that comes out there? Ice and snow like that. The parking lot up here, next to the garage, ice and snow like that. I come up Mulberry Street this afternoon. I had one hell of a job getting up because we got a bench here where people sit to go for the bus and then we have a path like this on the sidewalk. Yet we have an ordinance as the sidewalks are to be cleaned after so many hours, right? Am I right? Yes. You don't need to raise taxes. All you need to do is get a man to enforce the laws you got now on the books. Thank you, Mr. Tobin. You would come out of debt easy. Thank you. Get policemen on the street. I had a young girl miss me by that much in the intersection down on Spruce in Wyoming. She pulled in by the bank there, what used to be a bank, to let a person off. And I said to her, I said, do you know what the crosswalk laws are? And she squinted up and she says, what's a crosswalk? She's driving an automobile and she don't know what a crosswalk is. I just coming down now, made the turn here on Washington Avenue. The car was right behind me. If we got our policemen out and we got our laws enforced by our mayor, you wouldn't need to raise taxes. And I, we wouldn't be hearing about the university so much, or the hospitals. Not. I agree, they should pay something. Thank you. Compu commuters tax, I'm glad you didn't get it. I was in favor of it. But what good is it doing to put these new taxes on if we're not going to enforce the laws? Thank you. To make money. Who is responsible to enforce the laws? This is the only place that I know of that a mayor can say to the President of the United States and to the United States government, I don't care what you say about intersections. I'm not going to take care of them. Well, I realize what you're saying, Mr. Tobin, and thank you very much, but we must move on to other speakers. I mean, I did it once. I don't like doing it. But if I have to, I, I have the number and telephone number and everything. All I have to do is call them. And maybe we can get something done around here without every year's 12% increase, 22% increase. Where are we going to wind up like Hazelden? Thank you, Mr. Tobin. I wish I could speak to the safety director. I wish he'd call me because I think it's time we talk about safety. There's no safety here in these intersections. 
We had one lady get Mr. killed. Mr. Tobin, you can call Chief Graziano about this tomorrow. But we, we have, have to, lady. I'm sorry, but we have to move on now. Yeah, we have to move on. We, yes, other speakers have been waiting quite a while for their opportunity. I wish somebody would do something about this. Thank you. Very fast. Good evening, Dave Dobson, resident of Scranton. Good evening. Taxpayer and so forth. Uh, I'd like to mention, first of all, uh, I mentioned last meeting about an expanded recycling program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm still trying. It seems like every time I call the uh, recycling center, I get no answer <laughs> on the phone. So I'll try to DPW, but I'd like to know how many trucks a day they take on average down or even a year and uh, I had an estimate of uh, from the uh, union rep uh, that only half of our recycling is being recycled and the rest is being tossed in the trash I would agree with that on a general principle and uh, in realizing that Anything that goes down here is free. There's no tipping fee. So we've heard two or three times tonight about uh, the landfill not being paid in its entirety this year or whatever. And uh, uh, that could be a considerable uh, chunk of money. Uh, I suspect it is, and I'll try a little harder. Maybe DPW can come up with an answer for me along with the price of a full truck of, uh, a, the tipping fee on a full truck of uh, trash. Now, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we hear a lot of criticism here, and uh, what I feel about polit politics is if you're trying to attain your campaign promises, then it's time for some people to lighten up and stop making a federal case out of it. Uh, I don't, I think bankruptcy is an idiotic idea because it's going to totally take democratic process out of our city and we'll wind up with the receiver and uh, they'll run things whatever damn way they feel like. If you go on Pell's record for the last 12 years, uh, it might not be too good. It might not be very good at all because whenever there was an issue with spending or questionable or somebody not doing, uh, adhering to legislation, they had nothing to say. Nothing to say at all. And it's a real shame. And uh, furthermore, I'd like to see, uh, and here I'll be listening to what you have to say on pilots and commuter tax. And uh, hopefully someday we can get some kind of committee going or whatever and do our own research. It's time that we just say no more tax exempts. That's it. No more. It's, uh, I regard the current ones as water under the bridge. They're recalcitrant about paying anything on a pilot. And it's a real shame because if you take the amount of property tax that they would pay if they were uh, a regular profit generating institution, it would fill the hole every year for the last how many years? And that includes the school district and everywhere else. So how much can we afford to carry the rest of the uh, county on our backs? It's, it's just not. Uh, now. I'll have to put this in writing, but I, I see a lot of condemnations uh, in the paper. One of my favorite restaurants got condemned for some reason. I see apartment houses or uh, rental houses being condemned. And it's concerning uh, 
the one seemed to have a fairly nice family in it and uh, it was about two weeks before Christmas in Southside so uh, maybe we could tell me tip me off on their motions uh, as to where to go to, to get information as to why these uh, were uh, condemned and on this uh, snow business uh, it was my understanding years ago that the institutions uh, and businesses that are adjacent to these uh, like their sidewalks they're responsible to clear these and not the DPW uh, I used to come downtown after uh, a ser serious surgery I was advised to walk for exercise and uh, I would come downtown, ride the bus down, but because it was flat and the sidewalks were supposed to be shoveled, that's why I did it. And, uh, okay, I'll make it in 30 seconds or less. Once again, the golden parrot goes to the trade pactors. Well, you know, people have taken steps backwards in wages. Wages have been flat and going backwards. Uh, Social Security is one issue and I agree with it but it's not keeping up with inflation but average private sector workers in the working class have dropped as much as 30 percent and some of the professional classes have uh, gained salary and that's the only reason that wages are flat and not in reverse so uh, thank you once again and uh, don't don't uh, forget out there in TV land, call your congressman and tell him to take that trade pact and stuff it. And when he sends you that polite letter back uh, stating that he's creating uh, one job in ten for every one he sends overseas, tell him, I thought I told you to take that job or trade pact and stop it. Thank you and have a good night and don't forget, bok, bok, bok. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Uh, good evening, council. Um, I, first off, uh, I would like to empathize with the, with the man in the wheelchair. Uh, as many of you know, I stood behind a wheelchair for five years, and I know what it's like in, uh, when you're prohibited from going where you want because the snow's too deep. Um, and also East Mountain Road, the truck traffic, it's the same thing there. And we get that road, I'm sure, was not built, not only was it not built for 53 foot tractor trailers that traverse it, but it also has signage saying trucks for delivery only. And I know they're not making deliveries, so it's an issue, I guess, all over the city. Um, but I'm mystified as to why there's not a revised millage ordinance on the agenda tonight. I believe last year before the uh, hearing you approved an ordinance at 12 percent for the uh, real estate taxes and then at the last meeting um, you were increasing it and I don't understand why that's not on because won't the bills be going out because Pat I think you said that the county would not go along with extending the period this year so I would think the bills should be going out within the next couple of weeks we didn't receive anything from the law department as far as uh, uh, a revised military <coughs> that's why we're still waiting that's why it's not on the agenda tonight okay and and when does that have to be to the to the single tax office I assume they're the ones who do the printing yeah, uh, in fact, I was surprised that there wasn't an ordinance and that it wasn't something that was uh, mm. uh, on the agenda for yeah. itself. And I, I'm assuming that it will, will be something that the law department will send down by next week. Okay, because I was downright shocked when I didn't see it on the agenda tonight. And the agenda, there was a problem with in the IT department getting it posted. So I didn't know until I saw it tonight, and I was amazed. Um, now, at the... December 15th, there was a newspaper article, I believe December 15th was a Friday, that reported the city had been advised that the estimated revenue to be collected from a non-resident on 
on Wednesday, as in the day before your last council meeting for 2012. This taxpayer would like to know, uh, for you to explain why we're not informed of this change prior to your vote, your final vote on the budget during fifth, um, during seventh order. Could you please repeat that fifth, one more time? Yeah, I'm sorry. There was there was a change in the revenue estimated revenue to be collected. You knew that there was not going to be a, you were advised there was not going to be a, a, a non-resident commuter, or the commuter tax on Wednesday. On Thursday, you approved the budget. Why, why was that not shared with us that night? As far as uh, a non-resident commuter tax not being approved? Yeah. I mean, that has a big bearing on the budget. And if you knew that wasn't happening, um, that you were advised on Wednesday. I received word of the non-resident income tax not being approved after the um, budget was already approved. On Thursday night or on Friday? I'd have to go back exactly and check okay, my calendar. Well I just, but. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, to the monthly cash flow, I've been asking, is the, the 2013 monthly cash flow projection available? Um, not yet. Okay, do you have an ECD? Pardon? Do you have an estimated, estimated completion date when that will be available? I don't have an estimated date, but I could contact the business administrator and ask him when the cash flow report will be available. Appreciate that. Now back to some other old business from last year. 408 Cedar Avenue, the status of the loan repayment that 408 Cedar had? I still haven't received anything on that. Um, I might suggest you might want to follow up. And again, uh, at, the, at the September 6th meeting um, last year, Mrs. Evans said, um, so as, as we're, it, there was a discussion on 408 Cedar and a, a letter to be sent to OECD. But Mrs. Evans said, so as not to confuse the issue, please attach a second letter to Mrs. Abley requesting identification of any and all accounts and or programs included in the IDIS 20, 2102 through 2011 and IDIS uh, 2177 through 2012 action plans, including 2012 IDIS unobligated funds, which did not use the allocated CDBG funding and the results for each. That's never been received? No. I, that I don't understand that. I really, really don't understand how it, this can go on for this many months and and still be in the dark. Um, okay. Uh, have ground rules for what is acceptable advertising on city property been defined yet? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. The controller's re report for the month of November shows three budget transfers from. Uh, account in in 4310 uh, uh, 0108-00085 to 0108-00085-4401 in the amounts of five, two, and six thousand dollars. This was all within one month. Now since the total was over the ten thousand dollars requiring council approval uh, why didn't council vote on this? I think breaking up transfers, uh, budget transfers that would otherwise require council approval into smaller increments is a very dangerous uh, precedent to be set. And uh, I would hope that Thank you. Th that would be duly noted. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Chrissy. You got my card in the mail? Oh, I got it, and I loved it. For me, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You for me already? Did you get it already? Yep. It's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Did you get my card? 
Thank you, Deanna. Appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Really. Uh, Deanna, I think we're having the Happy New Year. Welcome back to the Council. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Good evening. I feel like I'm playing to an empty house here. Uh, I heard some good suggestions tonight. Mary Chalifko, resident, city of Scranton. And I think I'm on point with some of my comments as some of my fellow speakers. Um, I just want to remind everybody first that for 2013, the Pinebrook Neighborhood Association will meet every second Tuesday of the month at 6.30 p.m. My question is how much revenue is being lost in-house? I came partly because I read an article in the paper today about the Southside residents meeting last night and questioning licensing and inspections and permits being pulled and not pulled and favors and who gets pulled and who has to and who doesn't very quickly. Um, one name came up to me recently and it was funny because it was the same name that I saw in the paper today. I think there's favoritism as I said again. I think there's a lot of illegal procedures going on within licensing and inspections. Um, I have a copy of, for you, I've been given a copy of the condemned property list for the city of Scranton. I think you'll be shocked with what you see. And some of the reasons and some of the, uh, the code violations and that so very few have been released. Here's tax money. That's why I say in-house. We're so, we are like fantasy about some of the things that we can accomplish. May I, may I approach and give you yes, this? Yes, please. Yeah. Can we, uh, oh, thank you. There has to be, is there a way to find out, and I never would think I would agree with Judy Gatelli. But she did say that mention an inspection or a permit hotline or try to find out, um, you know, more info as to what is the situation in that department. Um, as far as she had also mentioned that Mark Seitzinger was supposed to but unable to attend their meeting, um, she can forget that. I was told that I was the reason that he doesn't help Pinebrook. Um, I just expect him to do his job, mm -hmm. but I'm also the reason he doesn't attend meetings because I'm too hard on him. Boo-hoo. So she shouldn't expect to see him at any of their meetings either. Um, at one point I received an email regarding a nuisance property on New Street saying he was dotting his I's and crossing his T's because he didn't want his action to get thrown out on a technicality. The next time I saw him, he told me that it was in the district attorney's hands now. I believe that was all fantasy. I agree that condemnation and demolition is a problem in the city. Um, the replacement costs, as I look around even my neighborhood, are like astounding of some of these structures. For the vacant lots has been brought up before, for the loss of tax revenue, codes, buildings that are being expected to be by today's standards that just isn't logical. And then you have unqualified people, again, as I've said before, running around and making these decisions. And I did have another complaint. I also had complaints about snow removal. Whose job is it? Do we have anybody that is supposed to inspect? We all know there's an ordinance. Is anyone supposed to actually inspect? Or can you call? Or who would go out? You can't possibly. We can't all possibly call the police department. No, I, I would think that licensing inspections and <laughs> permits, again, is responsible for the enforcement of this ordinance. And co very coincidentally, well, well. I received um, uh, an email from a city resident who was noting the city businesses that have not cleared their sidewalks. And I think, at, like Mr. Tobin was saying before, if the city were to actually enforce its ordinances. There would and be a lot of money. Find the individuals, yes. There would, there have been would a lot. be you money. You know how much money would have been made in the last few weeks to start off the new year? But they don't care. Nobody cares because they know nothing will happen. Nobody's out there. Nobody cares. It is a real problem. Well, it it's goes the same locations every year. Down by the high school, we should be ashamed of ourselves. I only have a small snow blower. I can't do it. It's turned to ice. Um, what do the, the inspectors get snow days? 
do they, they get snow yeah, do days? they get snow days i haven't seen it on the television do they get snow days like somebody calls them and says you don't have to come in today i don't believe so but i feel that um and i'm joking but it's no serious. no no i, it is I understand serious. what you're saying but i think the buck needs to stop at the top of the hierarchy leadership well, is responsible when city department heads or employees are not doing their jobs then it is the responsibility of the executor or the executive of the city i should say who has the power to hire and fire to oversee all of this and demand accountability and demand that work is performed appropriately well we've been down that road before. i know i we know, know may maybe there's one more year we won't I, I hope whoever the next mayor is can hire some qualified people this is a big problem and a loss of revenue and and if i could just jump in and add something Go and ahead. hold her time please my i my additional concern is with revenue sources uh, coming into this city that you know we don't have this concerted effort this ambition to do the job in other words uh, there's an agreement to put numbers into a budget to put ideas into a revised recovery plan but then they have to come to fruition right and what's happening is people aren't living up to their responsibilities the people who are supposed to do the work who are supposed to oversee the revenue whether it's rental registration whether it's enforcement of these ordinances it just all seems to slide by but it's not going to be able to continue for much longer because the fact of the matter is if city workers don't want and this goes from you know every department and department heads some people do a great job and they're irreplaceable but there are a lot of people who don't do much of a job and whether that's a lack of a work ethic or a um, inability to do the job because they are uh, basically not qualified to hold that job well that now becomes irrelevant because the money needs to be produced that has been placed into these documents and if people aren't doing it then there's going to have to be consequences for this and by consequences i mean that the city is going to wind up losing certain chunks of itself and i think you know we all agree bankruptcy is a very bad thing we've seen i've i've read article after article now about cities in the united states and the shape they're in from bankruptcy how everyone <coughs> each individual has had to become their own police officer and they take turns standing on corners and guarding their properties and guarding stores because as a result of bankruptcy their police force is decimated well you know i also think you can only as people said you can only borrow so much so where are you going to go and it can't be the taxpayers all the time because they don't have it and anyone with a brain in his or her, her head knows the vast majority of scranton residents can't afford monumental tax increases now the city has been dying no one has wanted to help the city whether it's the state whether it's commuters whether it's nonprofits whether it's tax exempts they've all turned away and said we're just going to stand by and watch the city die so what's going to have to happen you know the only answer here is going to be if city workers don't want to do their jobs don't want to bring the revenue in that's been plugged into all of these documents in order to keep this city operating 
and to keep them in their jobs, there's going to be, there's going to be drastic consequences. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that to hurt you. I do I'm just, just wanna, saying I want to clarify, since I'm on two subjects, my major problem with not doing their jobs or knowing or whatever they are is with licensing and inspections. DPW, I really wasn't you know, saying about the workers in the DPW department. That with the snow issue is more like private individuals and businesses that just get away with not right. clearing and sidewalks. And DPW, it's not their job to police them. Right. It's the job of LIPS. What's that? Licensing, inspections, inspections and, permits. and permits. Oh, okay. I forgot. I will, I will just add, I'm, I'm going to, I was going to say this during motions, but I've had so many complaints, and I'll elaborate on it during motions as well, but I'm going to ask that we send a letter to, not only to the DPW, because some of the concerns are on city property, Lackawanna Avenue Bridge, for example, the sidewalks, other streets, which I'll get into that later, and private property. I've been contacted by half a dozen people who complained about private properties that haven't cleaned their sidewalks, or they plowed their lot and plowed the lot onto the sidewalk, things of that nature. So I think what needs to happen is council, the mayor, the head of LIPS, and the head of the DPW all need to sit down and figure out how this problem is going to be addressed. Because we're not going to be as lucky as we were last year to only have an inch of snow. And we already see just first week of January we already had two snowstorms and I know every time it snows my phone probably rings just as much as the dispatch at the DPW <laughs> but I answer my phone and I'm talking to these people and, and they're upset and it's people that are driving people that are walking people in wheelchairs it's everyone in the city but uh, I'll address it more in, <laughs> if under you could please well. add the area around the high school like the Olive Street area I don't know who's responsible for that but that's embarrassing um, one last thing I did have Two homeless gentlemen approached me today as a neighborhood leader, and it's only a description. That's what they, did, you know, introduced themselves as, and they wanted to let me know that they were having trouble walking to and from the soup kitchen because the sidewalks were not cleared. And then they also told me that you know they're tired, they're afraid because they're getting yelled at by the drivers, and and you know everybody's blowing their horns at them. What could I do about that? You know, what could, how could I help them? And I said, the only thing that I can tell them is that spring will be here soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, 5A motions. Uh, Councilman Rogan, do you have any motions or comments tonight? Yes, thank you. I guess I'll pick up right what I was talking about, just about the snow removal. And I'm not going to beat up on any department or any individual but the snow removal and particularly with the first smaller storm was terrible throughout the city and not only from the city's aspect but also from private individuals and business owners as most people know and I just hope this message gets out there that if you own a property or a business and you don't clear your sidewalks within 24 hours when the snow ends you can receive a citation now, I, I do agree with comments that were made. We need, the city needs to do a better job of enforcement on that ordinance. Um, now, I, I, hopefully nobody gets ticketed because everyone's clearing their sidewalks. That's the best scenario. But if not, I would bet that if you just had an additional inspector go around and focus on those type of issues, that would pay their salary and then some. Mm -hmm. I've had, these are just a couple of the stories that I've had in, uh, Mrs. Craig, I'm going to give you all these to send, send out. Um, a resident who lives in South Scranton, they have coal heat. Their coal truck couldn't deliver their heat because Ham Court wasn't plowed. The truck couldn't get up the hill because we know south side, west side, the hill section. Scranton, very hilly. This wasn't the day of the snowstorm or the day after. This was today. And I understand there has to be, and, and I think everyone agrees, there has to be an order of priority of how roads are cleared. But this many days following a storm, what are we, five days now following the storm, every road in this city should be cleared. And nobody in the city should have to go without heat or the fear of that they're, they're going to run out of fuel because the truck couldn't get there. Another example, also in Southside, 
uh, Brook Street and Remington Drive. There's a daycare right there. And I've driven down there. I, I would get, it's a pretty large daycare. I would get her to say there's probably 100 children there. Obviously, the children aren't driving, but they have parents to pick them up. There's buses that bring them to and from school. That intersection is an L. You go down Brook and you turn on to Remington. It's actually right behind the, um, the Dunkin' Donuts in the Southside Shopping Center, right behind there. When you go back there, that road was like an ice skating rink. That was one of the worst ones in the city. Down in other parts of West Scranton, roads were deplorable. And the day after a snowstorm, you could kind of forgive it. You could say, all right, you know, there's a lot of roads to be plowed in this city. And another thing that I wanted to mention, it's also illegal to throw your snow from your sidewalks or your parking spot in the middle of the street. Because that also happens and then thaws and then that, that creates ice. But there is a problem. It needs to be addressed. And most of the complaints I've had were from South Scranton, West Scranton, a few from Pinebrook. And they're the areas of the city where the, most of the population is. Now, I haven't heard any complaints from Greenridge. Maybe the mayor takes care of his backyard first. Or maybe, you know, it just happened to be they didn't get as much snow on that part of the city. But we need to have a plan of snow removal for the city. Areas where hospitals, schools, and daycares are located should be plowed first. Believe me, I would love for my street to be the first one plowed, but I think by CMC, Mercy, and all the local schools and daycares should be plowed before, you know, my street or, or a side road. But then a day or two after the storm, you expect to see all the roads in the city clear. So I would hope that we could get something together. And I, I'm going to send this in. I have, if we could request a caucus with especially the DPW director and um, Mr. Dewar and Mr. Seitzinger to set up a caucus um, just to discuss a plan for the city on snow removal. It's not all in the city's hands with the city property, and it's not all in the private hands. Snow has to be removed everywhere. Businesses have to adhere to the law in the city. Just I drive down Lackawanna Avenue to work every day, and today the sidewalks on that bridge, which I believe are still the city's responsibility to clear, were covered. And when you let it go, and as you know, if you've ever not shoveled for a day or two and you let it sit there, it becomes ice, and then it becomes nearly impossible to clear. So at this point in time, it would take somebody, it would probably take somebody a day of hard manual labor to clear those sidewalks, when if it was done right after the snowstorm, somebody could have did it with a snowblower or a shovel in a few hours. So there's definitely something, something that needs to be discussed uh, by, by everyone. And, and I'm, again, I'm not picking on one department or over another or businesses, but we need to all get together and, and take care of that. If I could. I, I agree with what you're saying, um, and I noticed that uh, over the vacation there was an emergency declaration uh, from the mayor, uh, although it might have, I can't recall, it might have been signed by Ryan McGowan, deputy mayor, that I think it was. authorized hiring all of these uh, contractors for snow removal, many of whom are the, the very same towers that were here several weeks ago about um, the storage yard. And it seems that between the DPW employees and these independent uh, plowers and snow removers, that it all should have been taken care of. And uh, probably, you know, the, the last aside I would add to it, I live in Green Ridge, and I can tell you that my area, my street, wasn't done. Uh, we had that first snowfall, I believe, on December 26th. Nothing was done for days. That just remained. And then uh, after the second snowfall, uh, it might have been very late Saturday evening or the early hours of Sunday, that was the first time a tow truck came through. Yeah, the, the second, I've had complaints on both, and I'm sure we all have. The second storm seemed to, the response was a little bit better, still not up to par. But it's, it's definitely, like, I, I don't think there's anyone in the city that, that would say that the services is up to the standard it should be. And what's even more frustrating was the article in the Scranton Times where, you know, I'm sure we, the city spent a lot of money on overtime, 
clearing for the first night festivities, but they can't clear sidewalks for a resident who is in a wheelchair. So hopefully, hopefully this, this will be addressed. Um, next on to a few issues, a few articles that were in the paper over the break that I wanted to bring up. And these are all specifically concerning Mr. McGowan. And whether you support or opposed the commuter tax, the court testimony really showed how dysfunctional the city's business administration office is. And I have two articles here. The first one, Scranton Single Tax Office Disputes Testimony in Commuter Tax Hearing. And the second one, Judges Reject Scranton Commuter Tax. Um, I'm sure most of us has read, have read both of these, but I just want to quote a couple parts that really struck me. Contradicting testimony in Scranton's commuter tax hearing from the city had not received certain wage taxes two years ago from the single tax office. Thursday said it remitted $6,000 to the city in 2010. Wednesday's ruling by a panel of judges rejecting the commuter tax cited testimony from business administrator Ryan McGowan that the city annually keeps more than $500,000 in earned income tax or non-resident commuters who, whose hometowns don't have an EIT. But the city inexplicably did not receive any of this tax in 2010. Mr. McGowan also testified during a commuter tax hearing last week that he could not explain this discrepancy because he was not the business administrator in 2010. Going on in the article, I'm not going to read it, it's multiple pages. It was yet another mistake by the business administrator's office. The money was received by the city, I believe it was actually almost $600,000, $601,000, and it was placed into the wrong account. Now, this is going back nearly two and a half, three years, where this money was misplaced, not have been the business administrator in 2010, but he was in 2011 and he was in 2012. And when you're preparing to be in court and have to tell the truth and know the facts to present a case, he once again let everyone down. Next, judges, re judges reject Scranton's commuter tax. In this article, says the city's commuter tax revenue estimate also changed during the court during the court proceedings that took place on December 11th, 12th, and Friday. The petition initially estimated that a 1% commuter tax would generate $4 million per year in the latter two years, but only 2.5 in the first year because of a lag in obtaining full collections. However, asked by judges to back up that estimate with actual numbers on how much EIT is produced by the city, the city's witnesses on Friday testified to a revised estimate that a commuter tax would raise around $4 million next year and 6.7 in 2014 and 15. Again, with the differences because of a startup lag between year one and two and three. So once again, we have a business administrator who his job is to do these projections off by millions of dollars. And I think it's embarrassing for the whole city when you have somebody testifying on behalf of the city, whether you agree or disagree with why we were there, that he is that far off on these numbers. Also, when the testimony first began, and I couldn't find it, I know it was in, in one of the Scranton Times articles, Mr. McGowan was off by tens of thousands on how many commuters there actually are in the city. Going back to Mr. McGowan when he first took over as business administrator, there was an issue of $3 million of parking meter money that was missing for over three years. And once again, it was just attributed to a mistake. Obviously, there have been numerous mistakes made by the business administrator's office. And as Mrs. Evans stated, only the mayor can hire or fire. But I would like to make a motion, and I can pass out a copy to my colleagues, requesting that for the resignation or termination of city business administrator Ryan McGowan. And that is a motion. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? The motion dies for I'll, lack of a second. I'll second it, just so we could vote. Thank you, Mr. Joyce. On the question? Yes, um, just to elaborate a little bit further. Ryan McGowan, as a person, is a nice guy. I don't have a problem with him. But if you look at this pattern of mistake after mistake after mistake, when you're going into a court of law and you're on basically 
the biggest stage possible because you cannot lie. You have to tell the truth or you could go to jail for it. And he makes all of these mistakes. Now, I don't believe that he was cooking the numbers to make it look like the city was actually going to bring in less money to possibly fill gaps in other areas of the budget that might not be obtained. If that is possible, he lied under oath. And I'm not accusing him of that. But he should have known what the actual numbers are. It shouldn't take going to court in an open court for these numbers to come out. He's a full-time business administrator. He has made over $100,000 of the taxpayer's money in the last two years. And not one item has been correct. So that is why I believe he should either resign or that Mayor Doherty should terminate him. Just uh, to speak a little bit about where the numbers for the commuter tax uh, projections came from, I actually do have a study from the Institute on uh, Public Policy Development that did suggest that there would be $2.5 million in revenue in year one and $4 million in year two and three. And that was confirmed by Pell. Now somehow uh, that all changed when uh, the numbers from Berkheimer came in that showed that we had more commuters working um, in the city of Scranton than was originally projected in the study. So I can't understand why there would be a discrepancy in that. However, uh, the 888 money I, I do remember seeing that from tax collector court right that we did receive that money back in 2010 but as far as um, the decision to hire and fire the business administrator I don't believe that's within council's scope so I'm going to abstain from voting on this motion I would agree it is not in the scope of council it's a motion it's not binding um, just the reason I'm making is to put our opinions as a council on record. Um, again, the mayor, he's going to do what he wants. He's, that's what he's done the last 11 years. He hasn't listened to anyone other than himself. But it's just been, you know, one, one thing after another with, with these numbers not adding up from the business administrator, administrator's office. Um, from what I'm hearing from both of my colleagues, you're making valid points uh, however unfortunately tonight we are missing two of our colleagues and so I would ask that this would be tabled until such time as the entire council is present so that if indeed this passes it's coming as a message from an entire council hopefully rather than I, I would be agreeable to that and also it would give and the motion does state either Mr. McGowan to resign or for the mayor to terminate him it would also give Mr. McGowan a week to reflect on his performance in his capacity as business administrator and maybe step aside and let somebody else take the job somebody else that's going to come in and and actually do the job properly and hopefully these numbers will in the future will be provided to council and to the public proper numbers and uh, I have no problem if, if somebody wants to make a motion to table the I motion, make a motion to table the second previous motion on the question all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed the ayes have it and so moved uh, councilman Rogan's motion is tabled until such time as we have a full attendance by city council thank you and just one other comment um, on the agenda items it's they're all appointments to boards and commissions um, and as always we if they the appointee sends in a resume they usually get the council stamp of approval not to be picking on the business administrator's office today I see that mr. Renda the former business administrator is going to be reappointed to the sewer authority and I believe that the previous business administrator is part of the reason why we're in this mess we are now so that um, appointment I will oppose whether or not he sends in a resume and that is all I have for tonight thank you thank you and councilman Joyce do you have any motions or comments tonight 
Yes, I'm a little bit under the weather, so I'll, I'll be brief tonight. But first, I'd like to wish everybody a very happy and prosperous new year. In regards uh, to tonight's agenda items, as uh, Councilman Rogan said, we have various appointments and reappointments to boards and commissions. I'd like to express that I'll be voting yes to introduce all of these appointments. However, I will require that a resume or letter of interest be sent to Council's office by next week's meeting before voting yes for final approval. To report, over the holiday, Scranton City Council received correspondence from Rossi and Rossi, our independent auditors, regarding the 2011 audit. At this point, Rossi and Rossi has sent us a draft of the audit report from which the city is to prepare the city's management discussion and analysis section of the final report. At this point, the city needs to prepare the management discussion and analysis section. Once this is done, Rossi and Rossi will complete the final audit report and an exit conference will be held. Mrs. Craig, with this in mind, can you please contact Ryan McGowan, our business administrator, and inquire when will the city complete the management discussion and analysis section? Scranton City Council has also been notified of a contract executed to perform the Scranton Single Tax Office audit for the year ending December 31st of 2011. This contract has been awarded to Benita and Rainey, certified public accountants. Their firm is located on 3 West Olive Street in Scranton, PA. <clears throat> Just to inform everyone, the cost of the audit of the Scranton Single Tax Office will be $35,000. Uh, the cost to perform the audit will be shared by the Scranton School District and the City of Scranton, with each entity contributing $17,500 each. Over the holiday, the City of Scranton received a pilot, or payment in lieu of taxes, from Covenant Presbyterian Church in the amount of $1,000. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the church for their contribution and being a good neighbor. And uh, tonight I have some citizens' requests as well. I have been informed by several residents of Rock Street that since the building across from the Imperial Bakery has been torn down, mice have been infesting the homes in the 1200 block of Rock Street. This is becoming quite the problem as these residents uh, have never had uh, rodent problems in the past. And since the building across from the bakery has been torn down, mice have become quite the problem. Uh, Mrs. Craig, with this in mind, please contact our animal control officer about this problem and inquire if anything can be done to help the residents on this block of Rock Street. A concerned West Granton resident reports that there's been a car parked across from 312 16th Street for over a month and is becoming quite an eyesore to residents. The concerned resident reports that the car is a gray Volkswagen that is rusted out and would like to see something done about the nuisance car. Mrs. Craig, please forward this request to Acting Chief Graziano and inquire whether a patrol person could be sent out to this area to check out the problem. And finally, several residents living on Bernie Avenue have reported that motorists are speeding up and down the street, or up the street, and it has resulted in um, a sideswiped car and damaged driver's side mirrors for residents that park on the street. These residents living on Bernie Avenue would like to see some increased speeding enforcement on the street as speeding motorists are becoming problematic. So. With this in mind, Mrs. Craig, please forward this request to Acting Chief Graziano and inquire whether a patrol person can be sent out to the area to monitor cars that are speeding. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I too wish to begin by recognizing Covenant Presbyterian Church for its 2012 payment in lieu of taxes. Scranton City Council and Scranton taxpayers are most grace grateful for the generous donation of $1,000 to help our city. It has come to my attention that vehicles are parking for free on Mulberry Street and Colfax Avenue, the streets that surround Audubon School across from Geisinger CMC. 
Parking meters are in place in the streets surrounding other city hospitals, and although there is metered parking for some areas around CMC, the area across the street needs to be examined. Therefore, Mrs. Craig, please contact Standard Parking to request meter installation on the blocks surrounding Audubon School. Next, I'd like to address the issue of continuous truck traffic on Lake Scranton Road and offer solutions to remedy this problem. In 2012, City Council legally and lawfully adopted file of council number 70, an ordinance drafted by the City Law Department to prohibit truck traffic with certain exemptions off Lake Scranton Road from Route 307 northeasterly to Elmhurst Boulevard in the city of Scranton. Thereafter, the city of Scranton was threatened with a lawsuit if it enforces its ordinance and post signage. Mr. Burke, who spoke earlier this evening and is a resident of Lake Scranton Road, feels that public safety is jeopardized by a Dunmore business's need to get trucks to and from their destination as quickly as possible. In 2010, land was purchased to create an access road to a dumping site and D's U pull it. Prior to 2010, no major truck traffic existed on Lake Scranton Road, which is a peaceful two block residential area compro comprised of, I believe, 20 homes. It's a narrow street with no sidewalks that has not been paved in approximately 20 years, according to homeowners. The continuous truck traffic to and from Dunmore has further deteriorated the condition of this Scranton Road. It seems there are a few available options to solving this issue. Apparently, for 48 years prior to the development of an access road in 2010, commerce occurred successfully and without creating problems for Scranton homeowners and taxpayers. It seems there is another route available to truck traffic on Elmhurst Boulevard off of Blue Shutters Road. When traveling south on Pennsylvania 307, turn right onto Blue Shutters Road, State Route 2010. Follow Blue Shutters Road for 3.1 miles and turn left onto Elmhurst Boulevard. Elmhurst Boulevard runs parallel to Interstate 380 and leads directly to the access road created for the dump site. Thus, it appears that the city of Scranton is not responsible for landlocking a Dunmore business. Another possible option may be the use of smaller trucks to transport dirt, as has been um, uh, documented by Mr. Burke, as well as flattened cars, bailed metal, and recyclables. And that is according to Attorney Bellardi's letter and an agreement to repair and maintain Lake Scranton Road for as long as trucks continue to travel on it. Certainly, no business would wish to jeopardize the daily safety and quality of life of Scranton homeowners. And no homeowners wish to stymie commerce. There are options available outside of litigation against the city of Scranton a financially distressed and struggling municipality that suffers from no assistance from large nonprofits, tax exempts, commuters, and the state. It seems there can be no financial gain from litigation for either side. Rather, the goal should be to settle this issue in a manner that is satisfactory to all and that upholds very importantly, the safety, welfare, and quality of life of Scranton residents. Further, although similar lengths, or excuse me, similar signage has been posted in Scranton without commissioning an engineering study, the issue has been raised by the attorney for DeNaples Auto Parts. Therefore, Mrs. Craig, please send a letter to city engineer John Potius and Mayor Doherty requesting an engineering study of Lake Scranton Road 
and the related effects of tractor trailer truck traffic. Also, Mrs. Craik, uh, please contact the Pennsylvania DEP concerning the dirt that is being transported. Perhaps it could perform soil testing on the dirt that is being transported from, I, I'm not sure where, perhaps the Poconos. Uh, and uh, if they could also perform testing on the area in which it is being dumped. Next, a draft of the audit report was submitted to the Office of City Council by Robert Rossi and Sons on December 27th, 2013. Following the exit conference between the auditor and city officials and the delivery of the final 2011 audit to council's office, the council finance chair will announce the long-term debt of the city as well as other financial information. More importantly, however, at the conclusion of this process, I ask that the auditors, the business administrator, all business administration department employees, the city clerk, and our finance chair would meet to map out a more efficient and effective procedure to complete the 2012 audit in a timely manner. Throughout my terms on Scranton City Council, the annual audit has never been submitted to City Council by the May 31st deadline included in the Home Rule Charter. And perhaps that date may have become inappropriate or overly ambitious due to the downsizing of the Department of Business Administration, which occurred beginning in 2002 through 2011. However, the problem of past due audits has significantly increased in the last few years. While the audit process began in February, as is customary, the finalized audits were not completed until nearly a year later. That is seven to eight months past the charter deadline. In an effort to remedy this problem, two positions were added in the 2013 budget one by clerical contract and the other by a grant. And it is essential that these positions be filled as soon as possible. It's also imperative to train new and current employees in their daily duties related to the annual audit and develop individual responsibilities for all information requested and required by the auditors. In addition, city authorities must be put on notice that their audits or financial statements are due on or before the end of the second financial quarter. Therefore, a draft, or excuse me, thereafter, a draft of the audit report should be submitted to city council in July 2013, with the exit conference following no later than in August 2013, in order that the final audit is available in September as the annual budgetary process begins. Therefore, Mrs. Craig, please send letters to the mayor, the appropriate municipal authorities, BA, and Robert Rossi and Sons requesting an initial meeting during the first week of February. And finally, I just have two citizens' requests. Uh, Scranton residents reports that there are huge potholes on the corner of Curtis Lane and Bedford Street as well as in front of 1000 Curtis Lane. In order to avoid these cavernous holes, drivers swerve dangerously close to parked cars. Although residents have called the DPW, nothing was done. Please send a request to the DPW to fill these holes as soon as weather permits. This is a second request, the first having been made in October 2012. Residents report the lack of snow removal by city businesses, and I will forward the specific list to you, Mrs. Craig, to report to the department head. And that's it. 5B, accepting a $100 donation from NEI Ambulatory Surgery Incorporated, presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
The ayes have it and so moved. 5C, appointment of Joseph D'Antona, 1331 Cornell Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority for an additional five-year term. Mr. D'Antona's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5D, appointment of John Granahan, 1504 Price Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority for an additional five-year term. Mr. Granahan's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5E, appointment of Jack DeLeo, 125 Whitetail Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority for an additional five-year term. Mr. DeLeo's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Um, I know Mr. DeLeo. He is a very fine individual, hardworking, family man, man of faith, very professional. However, I do not approve of many of the actions of the Scranton Recreation Authority. And I have said so consistently for the past several years I do not feel that they should continue to be in existence. I further do not feel that uh, the authority ever should have been created. And so this is nothing personal against Mr. DeLeo or Ms. Gleason, whose appointment will be voted upon next, but I will be voting no to both uh, pieces of legislation. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5F, appointment of Colleen Gleason, 2104 Kapaus Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority for an additional five-year term. Mrs. Gleason's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and her new term will expire on December 31st, two th I believe that should be 2017. Yes. <laughs> At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. 5G, appointment of Stuart Renda, 1112 Woodlawn Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the Scranton Sewer Authority Board for an additional five-year term. Mr. Renda's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, no business at this time. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>